Good morning children. I am sure you all are hale and hearty. In our last video, we have started 3.4 The Brook. The British poet Alfred Lord Tennyson penned The Brook in 1886, just six years before his death. The poem is a ballad in which the speaker, the brook on, or stream itself undertakes a long and winding journey across the countryside to join up with a large river. Now children, ballad means it is a song that tells a story. The brook plays the role of the narrator as it tells the reader about its journey. In this poem, the brook teaches us to be cheerful and enjoy what we do. It also teaches us that we should never stop when we come across obstacles. With patience, we should overcome these obstacles and achieve our goals. In the last class, we have completed first four paragraphs of the book. Take out your textbooks and let us begin with the next one. Take out page number 68. Have pencil in your hand. Let us start. With many a curve my banks I fret by many a field and fallow and many a fairy foreland set with willow, weed and mallow. Now the rhyming words are fret, set, fallow, mallow and hence the rhyme scheme is again A, B, A, B. Now let us understand what the paragraph uh, is saying all about the brook, what brook wants to tell us. Now here we see that the brook does not flow in a straight line with many a curve means it flows in a uh, with lot of curves not in a straight line. It makes lot of turns and catches out a path full of curves. Fret means worry. She is worried. The brook forms so many curves that it seems as if it is constantly troubling its banks to change shape. The brook continues besides many fields as well as fallow lands. Now fallow means uncultivated land. It is going through many fields as well as lands which are not cultivated. And many a fairy foreland set with willow, weed and mallow. It means fairy forelands. Now fairy forelands means as if it is the entry gate to a uh, fairy land but actually it is a long narrow area of highland that goes out into the sea promotories. So the brook continues besides many fields as well as fallow lands. Fairy forelands refers to promotories. Just now I have told you the meaning of it. These are masses of land that overlook the brook. These uh, promotories that is that as if uh, the entry to fairy foreland are home to various plants. Which plants? Such as willow weed and mallow. Now willow weed means a, it is a type of a plant. And mallow is a plant with purple flower. So it is a home to plants such as willow weeds and mallow. And the brook passes them on its journey. Now see the next one. I chatter chatter as I flow to join the brimming river. For men may come and men may go but I go on forever. So the rhyming words are flow, go, ever and river. As the brook flows on its way to the overflowing river, brimming means overflowing. The sound is like that of people talking and hence the line I chatter, chatter as I flow. Again the brook repeats although men may uh, come and men may go but I go on forever. It means that men are transient and it goes on forever. I wind about and in and out with here a blossom selling and here and there a lusty trout and here and there a grilling. <clears throat> Again the rhyming words are out, trout, sailing, grilling. The brook coils and twists on its way to the river. An occasional flower can be seen on its surface that is blossom selling. Flowers occasionally flowers can also be seen on its surface. The floating blossom appears to be sailing on the brook. The brook is also home to freshwater fish such as trout and grilling. So trout and grilling both are, they are fish. A freshwater fish with a long fin is grilling. So the trout is a vigorous and energetic fish with very very quick movements. Hence Tennyson calls it lusty. Now lusty means very healthy and active. Got it? 
Now let's see the next paragraph. And here and there a foamy flake upon me as I travel with many a silvery water break above the golden gravel. Now due to uh, occasional turbulent flow which is not straight turbulent flow flakes of foams are produced which float on the flowing brook. Water breaks means water breaks are breaks on the brook's surface caused by unevenness of its bed. These water breaks reflect the sun that makes them appear silver. Gravel is usually of a brownish yellow hue. Hence the phrase yellow gravel. Now I think water break you have understood what is water break is a place in a brook where the surface of the water is broken by irregularities on the bottom. In the next paragraph brook says and draw them all along and flow to join the brimming river for men may come and men may go but I go on forever. Again the rhyming words are flow, go, river, ever making the rhyme scheme A, B, A, B. The brook draws along with it several floating objects means they, uh, they flow with it. So what does the brook say is that brook draws along with it several floating objects such as it flows towards the river. Here the poem's refrain is again repeated that is for men may come and men may go but I go on forever. Again suggesting that we may, we may come and go but nature stays forever. So this line is repeated many times. I slip, I slide, I gloom, I glance. Among my skimming swallows, I make the netted sunbeam dance against my sandy shallows. Now the rhyming words are glance, dance, swallows and shallows. Now skimming swallows, the meaning of skimming swallows means swallows, the birds that touch the brook lightly and quickly as they fly over it. Now the poet uses the words slip, slide, gloom, glance to describe its movements. Swallows often hunt for insects on the water surface, you know. They skim the water surface to capture the insects. The brook glides among these skimming swallows. The brook is moving constantly. It also carries with it numerous fish, floating, uh, floating blossom and etc. Swallows often fly over it. Hence, Sunlight that falls on the bed of the brook appears like a net instead of a continuous entity. Sandy shallows refer to the shallow part of the brook that contains lot of deposited sand and silt. As the brook moves, the netted sunbeam falling on the shallow bed appears to dance. Got it? That means? The reflection of the sunlight on the moving waters of the brook seems as if the sunbeam is dancing. I murmur under moon and stars in brambly wilderness. I linger by my shingly bars. I loiter round my cresses. Now the rhyming words are stars, bars, wilderness and cresses. Now children. Now here wilderness refers to a wild and uninhabited region. Brambles are often found in such places. Hence, Tennyson refers to such regions as brambly wilderness. An uncultivated region where I linger by my shingly bars, I loiter round my cresses. So, in quiet nights, as the brook passes under over numerous pebbles and uneven land, it makes a certain sound. In the silent wilderness, such sounds can be clearly heard. The sound reminds one of murmuring, as if the murmuring sound is heard. It is as if the brook is talking to itself. Shingles are accumulated masses of small pebbles. Shingles are accumulated masses of small pebbles, full of small rounded pebbles or uh, stones. Elevated regions in a brook uh, made of such an accumulated mass deposited by flow are referred as shingly bars. Shingly are usually found in the slowest moving part of a brook. Hence the brook says that it lingers by such places. Purposely it lingers by such places. Cresses in this case refer to watercress 
that often grows on the edge of brooks actually cress means what it's a uh, these are small plants cress means small plants so cresses is small plants <clears throat> so in this case refer to water cress that often uh, grows on the edges of brooks as the brook passes these tufts of water cress its water seems to coalesce among the plants hence tennison use the word loiter and loiter means to move without any purpose just uh, lethargically moving with lot of time spending lot of time over there in short we can say the brook often lingers because of the stones on the way <clears throat> now see the next that is the last one and out again i curve and flow to join the brimming river for men may come and men may go but i go on forever after facing the obstacles the brook again takes a curve and starts flowing to join the brimming river the brook leaves the wilderness the shingly bars and the water cresses behind and flow in graceful curves towards the river it ends with the refrain again that although the human life is transient the flow of the brook is perpetual so in short avoiding the obstacles it finally flows into the rivers so we should learn from this that even if we have lot of obstacles in our life we have to achieve our goals read the poem once again children at home and you can uh, list the prepositions you find in this poem so the prepositions used here are from among to in with and rest you have to find now there are so many things to learn in this poem so children here we have finished with the poem brook and i'm sure you all must have understood uh, a deep message that is conveyed through this uh, poem in a very simple manner that we have to complete our journey we should never stop when we come up across any obstacle with lot of patience perseverance and hard work we have to overcome the obstacles and achieve our goals so children let us discuss the rest of the things of the poem in our next video that is appreciation figures of speech word meanings and all and we, we will see that in our next class till then read the poem try to tune the poem read it once twice thrice and don't forget to take care okay thank you